First of all, it's about reactivating space in, space in the city which were not active through an imposition of a foreign object, that was at the time, you know. So the, uh, this object, which is electronic, one. Two, that you can actually, through invading that object by um, program and scale and sighting, gives it another dimension. So it has the importance of the program. And, and once we, we, we got into that, then one had to kind of look back at the survivors' drawings by Malevich and Nesiski and all these people to see how do you translate really what was implied through an art movement about, you know, liberation of gravity, um, the cosmos in a sense, how is that uh, done through kind of really minimalist kind of organization? How does that have an impact on the programming of the, of the building? And I think fragmentation in terms of one of the components of that discovery was not about, you know, fragmentation, but it was really about re-examining ideas of, you know, uh, of interior kind of life and how or the way you adjust the building to the city and came with that all these other issues, which is about deformation, distortion, juxtapositions, you know, layering, and there's a historic, you know, looking at almost, it was almost like preservation of existing thing and then superimposing. But the fragmentation led to ideas that it really would retackle the plan. And another thing to go back to the A was very important that the A, without saying, oh, we have a manifesto, that it's alternative life or living, but it was, an, it was definitely a, a, a kind of a, an underground agenda. That is, was really through re-examining mode of presentation, through looking at a program, that we are really looking at other ways of doing things. And looking back, it was a very exciting, it was a very exciting moment because everybody in that place was buzzing with that we are on the verge of something. We didn't know it, we didn't talk about it. Um, but it was a very interesting moment. And I think that there was tremendous energy. And, um, so, and so anyway, these also happen historically in strange times because there are other accidents or, I mean, at the same time there was this going on, there was Artnet by Archie Graham, there was the Institute in New York. Uh, they were all happening at the same time. There was, you know, oppositions, you know, Skyline written, um, you know, and I think that many people contributed to that research, which was, which was thrilling to us as students and, um, and all of them giving us clues that you can't do things differently. It's not easy, but you can do it differently. And that difference will make a difference. This is the um, working model for um, the um, central building for the uh, plant of the BMW in Leipzig. So it, it's really must be a, a kind of a model to show uh, the structure, the space frame structure, and the other structure of the two sides of this project. Um, so it shows uh, and also explores the idea of the terracing uh, as a kind of way of work. Uh, this is a very interesting project in terms of management and organization because the idea for it is that all the resources come through this one central building and then disperse to production and management. So this combination of management and production together in the same, in the same building. So these, these areas are plugged in into the production line, like the factories, whether it's Buddy White or um, the paint shop. And also inside the building are these uh, conveyor belts, uh, which will be shown in the animations maybe later, uh, how these cars are moved between storage and all the production facilities. So the kind of combination between, you know, spatial organization and management organization, and also a new way of, of uh, uh, reworking the idea of work between blue color workers and white color workers.
I mean, I think it's, it's not, it's really tough. You have to constantly, you have to be constantly have it. teams of people in the office to look at very different things, you know. I mean, it doesn't happen easily. Um, I mean, I think that this year we did so many competitions in the office, and some of them really are, I think, quite, there's nothing like them, you know. They're quite fresh. Um, but th it's a problem in competitions. If you do something too fresh, you're not, you're not going to win it because people want to get what you did five years ago. So it's, it's really a problem. This is studies for Salerno. Uh, this, this one is the model for Salerno. Maybe you want to go on the other side? This is another uh, commission we won uh, two, three years ago as a ferry terminal uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Salerno. This is the back of the building, unfortunately, it should have been. And it's basically very simple, kind of like a, like a shell structure with one single kind of move, which allows the, the people to come to coming out of the boat or into the boat to move like a ramp or a jetty into the building and then disperse and go out. Uh, Salerno is, a, is, is kind of a space where they would like to kind of really, uh, in terms of cruise liners, uh, compete with uh, Naples or take on a lot of the cruise liners and take them to the Amalfi uh, coast. Different projects, for example, the ski jump in Innsbruck uh, with the connecting the new slope of the jump uh, to the uh, kind of fluidity of the ski jump uh, slope to the, um, the room ab above. And what was interesting about this kind of program is that the ski jump is obviously was always a place where the, the jumpers would just go and, and kind of do their business, uh, so to speak. But by, by actually including an, a room on the top, automatically it makes a space into an urban space and more connected to the city. This, the site is not this away from the city. It's like the city is here. So it's like almost like a tower uh, in the city. So it, it allows you to have an urban kind of really component. And people can then for the first time see what the jumpers would see when they are at this, at this, uh, at this height. Different product. This product will also go on site quite soon in Vienna, Spitala, which is using the uh, Otto Wagner Viaduct. This is the first study of this project. Uh, the Guggenheim, in, the Guggenheim, and uh, this was a, also another. We did. We're working on so many different museums. This was a. Uh, the idea for the Guggenheim was to do a temporary Guggenheim where the interior has the most flexibility to, to allow them to do any kind of projects. 
And I think the fresh part of this project was to use this thing which is called a smart skin, where which is a skin which is a seems seamless, but is actually made of many components. It's made of glazing or ceramic tiles or metal or you know, some electronic kind of uh, projections, uh, and, and, but it's seen as one skin. But also the diagram is just a kind of very simple extrusion. It's like a kind of firework uh, and chopped at the end, so it allows the transparency from both ends. But basically, the, it's like an extruded section, uh, one section throughout the building. I don't really use cladding. You know, we, we're now testing cladding of new material, not material, but material for like BMW, but they're mostly I mean, for example, Rome, Wolfsburg, they're all concrete buildings. And Wolfsburg, we use material for kind of, in terms of concrete, you know, self-compacting kind of concrete, which means that it doesn't set very quickly. It's much more liquid, and therefore, it's easier to make these kind of really uh, amorphic forms and uh, fluid forms through it. So, um, but in Guggenheim in, in, in Japan, Tokyo, was this idea to use what we call the smart skin, which is a skin made of many components, so it's pixelated. So it's not one color, not one mesh. And therefore you can combine like, you know, solar panels with glazing, with, you know, ceramic tile, with other things. And I think that could be also interesting. And I think that also in terms of, uh, there are lots of new materials, for example, if you use this as an exterior material, uh, you can use it for insulation and you can smooth it, like polish it. And, and, but you can use it in small components right now. And some, some of these ideas, which, have, uh, which is ideas about kind of lifting the building off the ground or the idea of the, the ground peeling up and the ground becoming a, really a, a project started a long time ago. This is the project for Tokyo, which was this idea that you begin to, in, to multiply the ground by carving the ground or peeling the ground and making these two spaces, uh, the space in the middle, which is kind of, so it's like a miniature of the almost Wolfsburg project where the ground is liberated, the space in the middle is uh, open, but the structure becomes to become very critical, as, you know, and, and also the idea that you begin to look at ways of really uh, looking at spaces below ground and the idea of the ground no longer being one, one horizontal system, but this idea of topography begins to appear in, this, in these kind of interiors. The reason work is quite different, but it carries with the same ambitions, you know, which is about special experience, you know, and, and also challenging, you know, event spaces and challenging, taking on civic life. I mean, it's, that is, has always remained a very important component of the work, that, you know, whatever you are, even in this product in Japan, Tomigan as a Bujurban, they were so small, and Kudam, that we discover that, you know, even in those products which are so tiny, you can still create a space which is, has a degree of luxury and openness, despite the tightness. There's always a space of release. And um, that was a very important discovery when I did this very tiny product, and I think they were also very important in terms of my own work, because they were so tight, they had to be so well controlled, you could not lose an inch. This is another product in Japan, which was really, I mean, there were the days in Japan when they did this building, which was three meters wide. The circulation had to be one and a half meters, so the occupiable space was one and a half meters. And, and, but there was kind of an this, you know, discrepancy between the amount of space you can have at the height of the building to the maximum floor area. So it allows you to have very, uh, if you came over here, to, it allows you to have very large uh, space which is very stretched, let's say, vertically, so it can have two meters wide by ten meters tall. Uh, the museum in Munich for Brandhorst, which was, uh, the idea was to, to kind of really create a canyon in the interior of the museums with bridges connecting both sides, so it allows you not only a space for exhibitions but to create a kind of a, a really an urban space or a public space within the museum space and that also connects to the to a very large museum which is being built recently and uh, and and the street and so this idea of really combining ideas of kind of public 
uh, and civic domain with uh, public buildings becomes very interesting in the way it creates spaces within this, the one, one the, these uh, structures. So it's no longer only about you know, exhibiting art, but also about how to create these, um, not necessarily always very large, but important civic spaces in the building. And this is really, this, this kind of research has started, was started a long time ago uh, in the way, for example, in this project, when one of the very first projects where the idea of the kind of the, the lifting of the ground, no longer digging into the ground, but lifting in the ground. And it started with them not wanting that these sites, which is like in the docklands, in the harbor development in Düsseldorf, was that these are new territories, new sites, which required new kind of urban um, kind of research. And that to remove the, uh, the warehousing, and to place it by a new building imply that you have to have vistas and connections to, this, to the water which were not available before. And so two things occur, the, the, the idea that this building which will become like a kind of fingers which allows you to have uh, office space which is surrounded by, by light uh, and also we research of structure in this case and light and that uh, the light in the building kind of allows you a space where you don't have to have you know, artificial lighting all the time. Uh, but the ground was uh, significant, as you have, this is a, the triangle is a main plaza, but the idea that p lifting the ground to allow for the ground activity, like all the cinemas and theaters and uh, studios, uh, to be part of the podium. So there's, the idea of the podium changed. There's no longer the podium which is occupied the ground as a barrier, but to actually, because of the view, you can go up and down again into the side. 